uh, uh, listen to your, your story, uh, you say technology will not solve it all. Uh, I would almost say that technology can easily solve it all. Uh, for instance, you talk about recycling. At this moment, in the road, road dust in, on the US highways, there's uh, enough platinum for catalytical converters that almost with the new recycling technology we are developing, that you can uh, mine platinum to achieve the platinum mine in, uh, in South Africa. So, this so is an example of where technology can bring you and how to solve the problem. I think the, the, the main issue is that we don't have the politics or officials to give us the who could influence the market in such a way that these things start happening. I give an example in Holland. We've got uh, tough, well, ambitious goals for the development of wind energy. But after Copenhagen, a whole political debate has started again. Well, what is really necessary? Okay, so, so where does it lead? It leads that, that the businesses who have to make it happen also start getting wet feet. They, they start questioning, should we invest in this, in this new technology? So isn't the answer, we need the, the vision from Yes, yeah, absolutely. And um, we're going through, I mean, if, if in the energy technologies, there is still a couple of years, we have a couple of years when conventional dirty energy still is cheaper than the new energy. That is gonna, that's going to be history. And you know, at some stage, if it's five years or 25 years, I don't know, we can guess. You know. But at one stage, this is history. It's cheaper to have the renewable energies. We can guess, we can all guess when it happened. It will happen not too far away. Okay? But in that period, of course, you need subsidies, support, you need a cost of carbon, etc. to drive the investment and to drive those investments which make the renewable energy cheaper down the cost curve. Okay? So, on the recycling of metals, I think. I, I, I never said that technology is unimportant, it's extremely important, but the weak spot here is probably mm -hmm. getting all this dust back. Like if you're in the aluminium sector, it's actually getting the beer cans back, which is the weak point. Or if you're, so, so it's, it's about so how, do we, how do we make the social innovation that support, that make it possible to use these great technologies? That's often a, a weak spot. Um, uh, while uh, facilitating some uh, public-private uh, initiatives, the big challenge that we have uh, come across till now is uh, that the two entities speak very, very different languages. Uh, while uh, and the, the governance models, the, gov the, the governance um, language that do uh, the corporate sector and the uh, and the governance of a community, uh, the languages are so different that. While the corporate sector speaks a very exploitative language, which is almost like calling the person a consumer, saying the more he consumes, the more money he makes, uh, the more money we make, so we may have to make him feel hungry for what we have to offer so that he consumes more. While uh, the governance of societies, they, 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 they use the, uh, they don't call them consumers, but citizens. So, the, so we have seen that the language itself is so different, that's why it, it, it makes it very difficult for these two kinds of entities to come together. Uh, what do you say about the <coughs> successful models where the two entities have come together and have made good social innovation happen easily? Thank you. Okay. I, I know of one very good example. Okay. That is uh, the almost elimination of conventional pollutants in the car industry. Remember back 20, 30 years ago, the cars polluted, you know, there were black smoke cars, even in, in Europe or, or US or whatever. That's history. You know. And what, how did this happen? Well, it's, it's a great partnership model between policymakers and, and the industry. You have the and Euro, they have the Euro 1, Euro 2, Euro 3, Euro 5, Euro 6, I think it's Euro 8 or Euro 9 now. It's been sort of a continuous tightening of the, of the, the standards. And it's also been in advance, so the whole industry has known what will come five, six years from now. It's been predictable, okay? That's been very important. And then the car, the car industry and the fuel makers, it's been a, a collaboration between the two, have been a, able to innovate at the speed to keep up with the tightening standards. And the costs have been acceptable. We've been able to, to push them across to the consumer. You know? That has worked on conventional emissions, but not on CO2. Okay? So that's, that's a successful model. Uh, 
the fundamental problem, I, I think you're right. And I, I think the solution, my, my solution is, you know, we all need to keep the eyes on the ball, the target. I think that's the, the common language we, where we can get together is about what's the solution that's needed to get in place. Okay? We as business has to be clearer in, our, in presenting ourselves. We are solution providers, you know. We're not, and that's more important than profit makers. We, we have to build the trust in this solution. We have to be obsessed about solutions. And we must prove to society that we are. And whenever business has the, the attraction to rather go for short-term bonuses or something, we have to avoid doing it to keep the focus on the solutions, okay? And the same from the policy side. These guys have to be solution focused more than today. I think that for me that's the, the common language and that's why I find so, sort of when we go to policy makers, you know, I think this, this KPI set for the world will become something we will say, you know, let's start a discussion here. Yeah, yeah. 